So, hello and welcome everybody to a new video from Joggler66, Hour of the Truth, called The Strange Case of Leo Texel. You probably think when you open up this video, what a strange name for the video, and who is Leo Texel? <laughs> well, I'm going to answer this by reading the third chapter of Behind the Dictators, which is called The Strange Case of Leo Texel, and I have to admit before going into the book from uh, Leo Herbert Lehman of Behind the Dictators, I personally had no idea who Leo Texel was, never heard of him. Now you can say, well, that's bad research because I know him. Well, okay, then maybe I did bad research. I really had no idea. The thing that he put him in this book here is the big deception that it is all about. And you have to understand that whether... Leo Texel here is cited as being a Freemason, which he was, or cited of someone who converted to Catholicism, which he did, he always worked for the same master. So, why does Leo Herbert Her Lehman put Leo Texel in his book, and even in one of the very first chapters? Well, that has to do, of course, with trying to blame the Jews on a lot of things. As you've already learned, probably in the first chapters also, and you will learn in the next chapters to come, there was a world war going on during the time that Lehman wrote this book. And in this world war, there was a so-called Holocaust and uh, the extermination of the Jews. And there were, of course, many, many, many propaganda stunts that led up to these, meaning that the Jews were always blamed for stuff. And I don't go into this with a small little comment, because if I start that, that's going to be a video of an hour and a half for itself. Uh, you know that the Jews have very, very often been made responsible for things that they were not responsible of. Maybe we go a little bit deeper into that, while I'll read to you this very short chapter. It's only four pages long, and We'll see how long it's going to take. And by the way, this is something I'm, I think I've done only for the second time now. I yesterday already recorded the reading of this little chapter. But um, I turned all night from right to left and left to right because I just wasn't satisfied with the way that I did it. So this is why today on the 12th of July I'm doing it all over again. I kept only my last comment which takes about 15 minutes and I will put that at the end of the video in the original reading. I don't have to do that again because that was alright but my reading yesterday was really someday a little bit off. So I'm going to start right now reading chapter 3 of Behind the Dictators from Leo Herbert Lehman called The Strange Case of Leo Texel and we will get to know who Leo Texel really was. The prime motivation of Catholic action is its eschatological complex that the Vatican, as God's designated champion, must do open battle with the forces of Satan before the world ends. This is the first sentence of this chapter, and here already I have to make a little comment. The prime motivation of Catholic action is the eschatological complex that the Vatican as God's designated champion. Which God? Not the God of the Bible. We first and foremost have to learn and to understand that the Roman Catholic Church, which calls itself the only true Church in this world, outside of which there is no salvation to be found, is not the continuation of the Church started by the Apostles after Jesus was nailed to the cross. This is not the real true Church of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. This is the Church of Satan also the synagogue of Satan. And it is funny because later in this uh, chapter we will see that the Roman Catholic Church calls the Jews the synagogue of Satan. And on the other hand, that Freemasonry calls the Roman Catholic Church the synagogue of Satan and the other way around. So it, you're always spun around, you know, and they spin it and spin it and spin it until you get dizzy and don't understand a word anymore. That's the idea. So with his opening sentence here, and I'm quite sure that of course he knew 
that uh, the Roman Catholic Church is not the real church, as we can put it, that comes out of the apostles, but that is more the stance of the Roman Catholic Church itself, that it has to uh, battle with the forces of Satan before the world ends. Now, present world trends have convinced Catholic leaders that the time for that Armageddon is fast, fast approaching. In their minds there is not the slightest doubt, but that the ultimate and complete victory will be theirs. Well, <laughs> when you read the Bible, you know that the ultimate and complete victory belongs to Jesus Christ alone. So, when there are Catholic leaders that think that in their minds there is not the slightest doubt that the ultimate and complete victory belongs to the Roman Catholic Church, then I must advise to them, as I do advise to everybody and surely deceived Catholics, just to read the Bible. Then you know that an earthly church does not have complete victory in the end. Neither have they, the Catholic leaders, any doubt as to who comprise the, these forces of Satan. They now name communism as the generic term for, that, for the objective at which the various forces aim who are on Satan's side against the Catholic Church. And since they hold that all who are not 100% with the Catholic Church are against it. Hello? Do you remember a certain American president by the name of George W. Bush few years ago stating, if you're not with us, you are with the terrorists? So when you are not with the United States, you are with the terrorists, and when you are not 100% with the Catholic Church, yeah, then you are against it. Liberals of all kinds are placed under the banner of communism. Well, that's just at that moment of time. Pio Nono, the Pope Pius IX, who we will come to later in this chapter, I think, wrote the syllabus of error. And if you want to know what the Roman Catholic Church thinks of liberals and of free democratic government, read the syllabus of error, and you will get a wonderful lesson. Leadership of these combined forces of evil is accredited to world jewelry and Freemasonry, the author continues. So that means that jewelry and Freemasonry is accredited with the forces of evil that are against the Roman Catholic Church and communism. Well, Communism originated from the reductions of Paraguay in the 16th and 17th century. And these reductions of Paraguay were led, started, founded, fund and run from beginning to end through the Jesuit order, which is a Roman Catholic order a military order, not to forget. But anyway, the Protocols of Zion, preceded by the like forgery of the secrets of the elders of Burgfontein, as we already read in the previous chapter, have spread this belief among Catholics everywhere. Yeah, it's not what is true what counts, it's what is observed to be true that counts. Obvious forgeries, though they are admitted to be, it is safe to say that nothing contributed more to the rapid victories of fascism over the forces of liberty and tolerance than these alleged protocols of the elders of Zion. Yeah. So what does this last sentence actually mean? That these protocols of Zion laid the foundation for the hatred of Jewish people. And there you see, of course, the interest of the Jesuits actually bringing a plan like this, bringing the protocols of the learned elders of Zion or the secrets of the elders of Burgfontein, as it was formerly known, into the world. Because the Jesuits, the Roman Catholic Church, wants the Jews to be destroyed. 
and I advise everybody who wants to learn a little bit more about that to go back to my upload on Hour of the Truth, episode 47, called It is Simply Amazing, where I do a show of one hour and a half showing you the Roman Catholic Church persecution of the Jews throughout the centuries, or almost millennia. But okay, we are continuing. Understanding that the Protocols of the Elders of Zion was a document very conveniently coming into very much fame at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century, and by that could be used by people like Adolf Hitler and other fascist dictators, who were run, controlled completely, as we will learn as we go further in the book, by the Roman Catholic Church from the beginning. As has been pointed out, they insidiously picture world Jewry and Freemasonry as conspiring to establish the reign of Satan on earth, and by contrast, the Catholic Church as the sole bulwark and only certain triumphant force against it. I'm sorry, sometimes can only read one sentence before I again have to make a little comment, but you have to understand what I've just read here. That means that they insidiously picture world Jewry and Freemasonry as conspiring to establish the reign of Satan on earth. But everybody who does his real research, and certainly based on the Bible, knows that the reign of Satan on earth is through the vicar of Satan on earth, that is the so-called Vicar of Christ, Vicarius Filii Dei, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin of the Bible, the Pope, the office of the papacy from the beginning. That is how the reign of Satan is here on earth. Yeah, we have a, heaven, a, a, a godly kingdom, but it is not the God of the Bible. It is the God of this earth, as referred to in the Bible also, that Satan is the God of the earth. Satan is the God of this world, of this world of all worldly things. And that's why friendship with the world is enmity with God. Okay, I hope I made the point. As employed by Nazi fascism in the past ten years, this fantastic but clever fraud has already succeeded in discrediting democratic institutions of government, even in the United States, and in glorifying the authoritarian rule of force and brutality. So, in other words, the democratic institutions of government, even in the United States, have been successfully discredited because the government of the United States very often is brought together with Freemasonry. And so they say, okay, Freemasonry is of the devil, so the government of the United States is of the devil, because it is run by Freemasons. Therefore, you have to understand that Freemasonry is nothing else but the Protestant arm of the Jesuits. And as we will probably see a little later in this reading, or even later in this book, as you have already seen in other uploads of mine, you know that on the top of Freemasonry stands the same person as on the top of the Jesuits, the Black Pope, the General. Using the left-right paradigm to advance the hand on the grandfather's clock. You are not caught by Freemasonry, okay, then you're caught by Catholicism. You're not caught by Catholicism, then you go to Freemasonry. Either side is controlled by the same devil on top. No one can deny the chief role which the Catholic Church has played in these events and all that has led up to them during the past half century, speaking of the 19th century. Pope Pius IX, who I already mentioned, Pio IX, calls Freemasonry, quote, the synagogue of Satan, whose object is to blot out the Church of Christ, where it possible, from the face of the earth, unquote. Well, I say this is the pot calling the cattle black.
Antichrist Pius X says, quote, So extreme is the general perversion that there is room to fear that we are experiencing the foretaste and beginnings of the evils which are to come at the end of time, and that the son of perdition, of whom the apostle speaks, has already arrived upon the earth. Unquote. Bravo, Pope Pius X. The son of perdition of whom the apostle speaks has already arrived upon earth. He has. It's you. When you look in the mirror, my dear Pope, you see that son of perdition that has been spoken of by the apostle. That's it. But of course you are deceiving the people because you are one of the ministers of Satan who disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness, right? But I find it quite quite interesting that Pope Pius the X says that the son of perdition of whom the apostle speaks has already arrived upon the earth, and of course blaming someone else. As has been shown in a previous chapter, the popes of Rome condemn masonry as an alliance with Judaism chiefly because it teaches tolerance of all religions and works for the establishment of popular government, secular education and international brotherhood. Well, the first point that is being made here is because it teaches tolerance of all religions. May I ask my attentive listener a question. Who was the first in this world to promote religious liberty, or as it is stated here, tolerance of all religions? Because if you say tolerance of all religions, or you call it religious freedom, or freedom of religion, is always the same thing. You just give it other words, other names, but it's the same thing. And if I'm not mistaken, it was at the founding in 1776 of the United States of America, through, as we have learned by reading Rulers of Evil, through Catholic and Jesuit educated and controlled people, that the United States of America in 1776 was the first country to establish freedom of religion. Of course, because the Catholics had only 1% of the inhabitants of the United States at that time. They were the minority, and without freedom of religion, they couldn't practice their religion, because freedom of religion to a Catholic only means that he can attend to his religion, that he can practice Roman Catholicism, that idolatrous, idolatrous and superstitious religion. That is freedom of religion for Catholicism. So, when it, it, it says here, it has been shown that masonry, in, as an alliance with Judaism, um, teaches tolerance of all religions. I'm sorry, what does the Roman Catholic Church do in places like the United States in 1776? Exactly the same thing. So, if you don't know that, of course, then you do not see the similarities between them. But if you take a close look, you see how actually this masonry that is alleged um, teaching tolerance of all religions is actually just the same as the Roman Catholic Church because their goals are the same. And here, with sentences like this, you even understand that. But continuing, there is nothing too fantastic that the popes and Catholic authorities have not believed and propagated against Judaic Masonic aims and activities. The most astounding and outrageous were the alleged revelations of the arch-impostor Leo Taxel towards the end of the last century. So successful was his deception of the Pope himself and the whole Catholic world that Father Herbert Thurston, S.J., forgive me for saying Father, that's because it is written here in the book that way, S.J. stands for Sociedad Jesus, or Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, so that the Jesuit father Herbert Thurston is forced to deplore the fact that examples of, quote, excessive credulity have been too lamentably 
brought home to our generation by the outrageous impostures of Leo Texel. Unquote. Texel's real name was Jogan Pages, and he is described by Father Thurston as, quote, the most blasphemous and obscene of anti-clerical writers in France, unquote. He was once jailed for having published a book entitled Les Amours de Pieds Neuf, which means the love affairs of Pope Pius IX, Pio Nono, that I've spoken about earlier. That was all before his, listen very closely, conversion to the Roman Catholic Church. It was then that he began to make alleged revelations about the Freemasons and published a larger number of books about them, each more astounding than the other. So Leo Texel, born Jogan Pages, was a Freemason. And as a Freemason, he wrote against the Roman Catholic Church. Among others, he wrote The Love Affairs of Pope Pius IX. He also published The Amusing Bible and other things. You can, all, you can look that all up on the Internet without any problem and find that. And then, all of a sudden, he makes a conversion to the Roman Catholic Church. Now, what does he start then? Then, all of a sudden, he exposes Freemasonry. Or at least, he tells stories about the Freemasons and their organizations, whether they are true or not. That is to us, on a later time, to find out. I leave it at this. But the author continues, Sensing the Catholic Church's demon complex, Texel played this up with consummate art. In his many novels, which were published by the Catholic press all over the world. Yeah? So, they publish all the work that Leo Texel writes against Freemasons. Texel stressed the cult of demonism, or what he called Satanisme, or Satanism, when you want to pronounce it in the English way. He pictured the Freemasons as practicing this worship of the devil, and accused them of assassinations, sexual orgies and white slavery. Now, wait a minute. What does Leo Texel write? What does the Roman Catholic Church publish in their own press in the words of Leo Texel? Freemasons are practicing this worship of the devil and accuse them of assassinations, sexual orgies and white slavery. Now, my dear listener, you know that I have been exposing the Jesuit order for quite some time. And you know, when you go a little bit through the history of the American presidents, that there are at least five presidents who have been assassinated by the Jesuits. Harrison, Taylor, Lincoln, JFK, Buchanan, Garfield. How many were that already? Five? Six? Look it up. I did an upload um, behind the door, a little playlist. You can see there are only four videos uploaded for right now, but there will be coming a lot more. From Bill Hughes, where I think the third or the fourth video is about um, the assassination of the different American presidents that I've just named here. So assassinations, well, they can all be traced back to the Jesuits. Sexual orgies, well, what about the sexual orgies in the Vatican? Just go to my book reading of Babylon Mystery Religion and I have expounded on that in one of the chapters about how <laughs> quote unquote unfallible the popes were. <laughs> yeah? And with all the sexual depravities they had there. And white slavery. Well, white slavery, black slavery, yellow slavery. It doesn't matter what color the man has. The Roman Catholic Church always puts everyone into slavery. So, Leo Texel is here pointing out the Freemasons as assassinators, as holders of sexual orgies and white slavery, where actually the Roman Catholic Church is just exactly the same thing. Again, the pot calling the cattle black.
He recounted that the Freemasons tried to get women into their power to the point of forcing them to have intercourse with the devil. Now how is that possible when the devil is a spirit and a spirit like an angel cannot have sexual intercourse with persons? But that's another thing. But you know, Adam Weishaupt once said, O oh, foolish man, what can you not be made to believe? This is one of the things. As proof that Freemasonry was secretly controlled by the Jews, not by the Jesuits, by the Jews, he revealed their alleged practices of Jewish rituals. So, here you see the real agenda of Leo Texel, discrediting the Jews again in the forecoming time of the First and then the Second World War with the Jewish persecution all over the world. That is needed, understand that please, dear listener, that is needed because the Roman Catholic Church, the Antichrist, needs a nation state of Israel to fulfill Daniel's 70th week in their mind, how they see it, because Daniel's 70th week, the prophecy of the prophet Daniel, chapter 9, all the verses up to 24 and 27 have been completely fulfilled by our Lord Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. And I made enough videos on that, and Jesse Vessel is for the moment being uh, doing uh, videos on that, and you can also check my second channel uh, and the playlist Jesse Vessel, and there you will find a lot on Daniel's 70th week also. But the Roman Catholic Church has the agenda to build a nation-state of Israel, which is under the disguise of so-called Zionism, started by Leo Herzl, who was a Jesuit-controlled person. The Pope, the Antichrist, is the greatest Zionist of the world. So, here they blame the Jews that they can later start persecuting them, and when persecuting them, then giving them the option to go to Palestine and have their own country there, as we have since 1948, the nation-state of Israel over there, which is absolutely 100% unbiblical and only there that the Roman Catholic Church can make a ratio studiorum replay of Daniel's 70th week with their chosen actors in place, instead of what God prophesied to Daniel. The Catholic clergy everywhere were especially delighted with Texel's sinister novel Pelagismus, the story of Diana Vaughan, who, according to him, was the result of the union of her mother with a devil named Bitron. <laughs> yeah, there you have the deception again. Huh? a woman having sex with a kind of a devil. These fantastic revelations, well, really, it's fantastic because it all jumps out of a sick mind. These fantastic revelations convinced many that the Catholic hierarchy were in direct contact with this daughter of the devil through the intermediary of Leo Texel, now their protégé. Pope Leo XIII received Texel in private audience. Hello? Not only was the former Freemason converted to Roman Catholicism, he even was granted a private audience with the Antichrist, Pope Leo XIII. And then the Pope gave him his blessing and assured him that he had read his books against the Freemasons with intense interest, and that his writings were of great benefit to the cause of the Catholic Church. That is true, because it supports the agenda of Jewish persecution of the Roman Catholic Church. I pass over the question many will ask, as how to an infallible Pope could be so completely deceived by one of the most outrageous impostors who ever lived. It was one time that the Jesuits too were outdone. And I do not agree on this last sentence of Mr. Lehman 
in this book. No, 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 no. I do not agree with that. The Jesuits were not outdone. But because Leo Texel first served the Freemasons and then served the Roman Catholic Church, and you know who is on top of these, both, you know that he was just playing an agenda for both sides. The Jesuits were not outdone. I mean, a few probably, but not the ones on the top, because they plan these things. It is their agenda. Leo Texel was nothing but a lying puppet. Lying? Well, we come to that. For a long time, Leo Texel enjoyed the easy success he had obtained by playing upon the credulity of the Catholic clergy and laity. Then came the great denouement, planned and carried out by himself, as it were, for the fun of it. In order to enjoy his victory over the Jesuits to the very last, he called a public meeting in Paris on April 10, 1894, and announced to the consternation of his hearers that all his activities, his books and pamphlets, as well as the story of Diana Vaughan, the daughter of the devil who had been converted to the Catholic Church, were nothing but a huge joke dispassionately concocted and executed by him. He quietly told them that Diana Vaughan was merely the name of his typist. Well, the thing that you have to go back to and remember very well is the date of April 10th, 1894. And as you probably remember from the chapter before, you know that the Dreyfus affair was in 1896. And you know in the meantime what the Dreyfus affair is, so I don't go into that anymore. But you understand that they play this agenda from different sides to blaming the Jews for different world events. Yeah? So keep in mind the date of 1894. It's also for my later coming comment interesting to keep that date in mind. The interesting and serious point in the whole affair is the fact that it was the Jesuits who translated Texel's novels into German. Yeah the Jesuits translated Texel's work into German. And where did all the Jew hate originate from, so-called? Germany, eh? Wasn't it? So it was important that all this deceiving, lying work of this Leo Texel was translated to German. The Jesuit father Gruber, whose article on Freemasonry in the Catholic Encyclopedia is nothing but a rehash of what Texel says about it, widely publicized all his books. And they continued to reassert that what he had written was perfectly in accord with actual facts, even after they had broken with him because of his dramatic expose of himself. And even to this day, in the United States, the Catholic Church continues to publish and broadcast Texel's frauds about Freemasonry and its alliance with world Jewry. The New World Official Organ of the Catholic Archdiocese of Chicago, in its issue of March 26, 1910, published an article entitled Freemasonry, The Open Door to Damnation as defamatory and fantastic as anything Leo Texel ever wrote. It was reproduced as a sample of Catholic animus towards Masons and Jews in the souvenir edition of Life and Action during the Knights Templar Conclave in August of that same year. It states that, quote, Jews are the master spirits of the Masonic craft, unquote that, quote, Freemasonry was founded and organized by Jews in the vain hope of destroying Christianity, unquote. That they plot assassinations of prominent men, even in America, and corrupt the judiciary to set murderers free. Reminiscent of Pope Leo's condemnation of Freemasonry in his bull Humanum Genus is the following, and I will read that to you in a minute. But now, I ask you just to go a little bit back and read this last paragraph and instead of inserting Jews, you insert Jesuits and you come to the truth. It states that, quote, Jesuits are the master spirits of Masonic craft and that Freemasonry was founded and organized by Jesuits in the vain hope of destroying Protestantism because it is saying here Christianity and we have to put Christianity 
into real terms. And the real term of Christianity is Bible-believing, Bible-following, Jesus-exacting belief. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Jesus Christ, the creator of all things. That is real Christianity. And that, that's why I repeated that reading, reading instead of Jews, reading Jesuits, that is the reason of their whole existence, as you know, of course, from their oath of induction and from the Council of Trent, 1545 to 1563. But okay, what does Pope Leo write in his uh, bull Humanos Genus, Humanum Genus? Quote, A society that admits to membership Christians, Turks, Jews, Chinese, and every other species of barbarian and amalgamates them, or the majority of them, into an army of infidels and atheists, must be animated and controlled by the malevolence and malice of the evil spirit. There is no reason to doubt that a Christ-hating Jew is the head of the Masonic craft at this time, and at all times. Unquote. Did you get that? I hope you got it. I'm going to read it again, what the bull Humanum Genus from Pope Leo tells you. A society that admits to membership Christians, and I guess that he means in this case Protestants, Bible-believing Christians, because those are the main goal of the Freemasons to get in there. Turks, meaning Muslims, Jews, Chinese and every other species of barbarian and amalgamates them, or the majority of them, into an army of infidels and atheists, meaning everything against the Roman Catholic Church, must be animated and controlled by the malevolence and malice of the evil spirit. There is no reason to doubt that the Christ-hating Jew is the head of the Masonic craft at this time and at all times." Unquote coming out of the mouth of a Pope in an official papal published bull. But I think I made the point, eh? There is no need here to stress the fact that, when it comes to a text on Judaism and Freemasonry, Leo Texel has nothing on Father Coughlin. This priest and his powerful supporters among the Catholic clergy and laity in America are copying the methods of Hitler and the other dictators who have ruthlessly obliterated Freemasonry and Judaism from all of Central Europe. In reality, they are not so much imitators of Hitler, Mussolini and Franco as the successors of the Popes, the Jesuits and the Texels, who initiated the campaign half a century before Nazi fascism came into being. Its objective was, and still is, to destroy the effects of the Reformation and to re-establish the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. That empire that ruled a thousand years until the Reformation came, the hand of God came and smashed it into pieces which all the popes are now trying to pick up again. Well, this last sentence brings us to the end of chapter 3, and I'm sorry, I thought I would only take half an hour, because that took it yesterday, but today it took 39 minutes, or even almost 40, until I'm probably completely done. <laughs> and now you still have to sit through my last comment that I will put at the end of the reading here. But just going back to that late uh, to that um, uh, last paragraph once again, there is no need here to stress the fact that when it comes to a text on Judaism and Freemasonry, Leo Texel has nothing on Father Coughlin, and we learned about him in chapter two, right? This priest and his powerful supporters among the Catholic clergy, uh, Catholic clergy and laity in America are copying the methods of Hitler. No, they are the originators, and Hitler only does what he is told. And the other dictators who have ruthlessly obliterated Freemasonry and Judaism from all of Central Europe. In reality, they are not so much imitators of Hitler, Mussolini and Franco as the successors of the Popes, the Jesuits and the Texels, who initiated the campaign half a century before Nazi fascism came 
into being. It's all about preparation. And that's what they did. Its objective was and is still to destroy the effects of the Reformation and to re-establish the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. And we will see also in future readings of this book, future chapters, how that is going to happen. Now enjoy the coming comment. This is the sentence with which the author concludes chapter 3 of Behind the Dictators, called The Strange Case of Leo Texel. If you want to get any more knowledge about Leo Texel, just Google his name. But hey, the author's done, but I am not done yet. I still have something to say. And this is something that will probably shake you. Because everybody knows a certain quote from a certain high Freemason of the United States of America, Albert Pike, from his book, so-called Morals and Dogma. Leo Texel is most known for his false quote from Albert Pike from his book Morals and Dogma, and the infamous Texel hoax quote, supposedly from Albert Pike, is as follows. Quote, that which we must say to a crowd is, we worship a God. But it is the God that one adores without superstition. To you, Sovereign Grand Inspectors General, we say this, that you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st and 30th degrees. The Masonic religion should be by all of us initiates of the high degrees maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. If Lucifer were not God, would Adonai, whose deeds prove his cruelty, perfidy, and hatred of men, barbarism, and repulsion for science, would Adonai and his priests culminate him? Yes, Lucifer is God, and unfortunately Adonai is also God. For the eternal law is that there is no light without shade, no beauty without ugliness, no white without black, for the absolute cannot only exist as two gods, darkness being necessary to the statue and the break to the locomotive. Thus, the doctrine of Satanism is a heresy, and the true and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Adonai. But Lucifer... God of light and God of good is struggling for humanity against Adonai, the God of darkness and evil. Unquote. This infamous Texel hoax quote, supposedly from Albert Pike, was taken, what I've just read, from the book called La Femme et l'Enfant dans le Franc Maconnerie Universelle. So this is a French title, and when I have to translate that into English, it says the woman and the child in the French Masonic universe. So, I didn't write that down, that's the way I translated it right here. By A.C. De La Rive, published in 1894. Now, we just spoke earlier, when I read the book to you, about the date of the 10th of April, 1894, right? Now, this is also published in 1894. And you have to know, Albert Pike died in 1891. So when Leo Texel came up with this fraud, and this book was at that time not available as it is today, Morals and Dogma, it was always kept within the society, yeah? so nobody could really probably check on that as we can today. And that was three years after his death, so Albert Pike couldn't say anything about it. You have to understand that 1894, also this date, is so close to the Dreyfus affair that we spoke about in an earlier chapter. Where again, it were the Jews that were made responsible for everything bad happening. Okay? So I just want to keep you, I want you to keep that in mind, the date, 1894. Now when Texel admitted his hoax in 1897, De La Rive wrote, quote, With frightening cynicism, the miserable person we shall not name here, Taxel, 
declared before an assembly especially convened for him that for twelve years he had prepared and carried out to the end the most sacrilegious of hoaxes. We have always been careful to publish special articles concerning Paladism and Diana Vaughan. We are now giving in this issue a complete list of these articles which can now be considered as not having existed. Unquote. Published in the April 1897 issue of Freemasonry Disclosed. Now, when you read the book Morals and Dogma, you read the following on page 210. And because I always do research before I read a book like this in preparation of the reading, not all the comments, because all comments up to now were freely spoken, I didn't write them down, but this one I wrote down, I was going to look for if I could find Morals and Dogma online, and I found it online, I found it as a PDF version, I downloaded the PDF version, and then I was just looking in the document, searching some stop words, you know, some quotations, looking up where can I find this, and I landed on page 210. Now, I just read to you what Leo Texel wrote, what so-called was a quote from Albert Pike, and now I give you the quote that is in my version of the PDF book, Morals and Dogma, page 210 on the PDF, so that's maybe 211 in the book, I don't know. Quote, the apocalypse is, to those who receive the 19th degree, the apotheosis of that sublime faith which aspires to God alone, and despises all the pumps and work of, works of Lucifer. Lucifer, the light-bearer, strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning. Is it he who bears the light, and with its splendors, intolerable blinds, feeble, sensual or selfish souls? Doubt it not, for traditions are full of divine revelations and inspirations, and inspiration is not of one age or of one creed. Plato and Philo also were inspired. The Apocalypse, indeed, is a book as obscure as the Sohar." Unquote. Now, with reading this quote from Albert Pike, I had to look up what is the Sohar. Do you know what the Sohar is? S-O-H-A-R. I didn't know what Sohar was, so I looked it up. The Sohar, or Zohar, Hebrew means splendor or radiance, is the foundational work in the literature of Jewish mystical thought known as Kabbalah. Okay? So Albert Pike says here, traditions are full of divine revelations and inspiration. The inspiration is not of one age or of one creed. Plato and Philo, and we know Plato and Philo coming out of Greece, the philosophers, the Gentiles, never heard of the word of God, were also inspired. And then the Apocalypse. So what is the Apocalypse? That's the book of Revelation in the Bible, right? Indeed, is a book as obscure as the Sohar. So Albert Pike here says that the Apocalypse, the revelation of Jesus Christ to the Apostle John, is a book as obscure as the Sohar. So is Albert Pike speaking the truth? Based on the Word of God, based on the true Word of God, based on the Bible, or is he making up his own philosophy here? I ask you. You answer me. I think I know the answer for myself. So the Zohar means in Hebrew, splendor or radiance is the foundational work in the literature of Jewish mystical thought known as Kabbalah. Now, Kabbalah. It is the main language, you can read there, it is the main language of the Talmud. Babylonian inspired Judaism that has nothing to do with the word of God and therefore addresses only apostate Jews. 
Like the scribes and Pharisees at the time of Jesus, so please understand that this has nothing to do with the Jewish people who have been betrayed and lied to by their clergy and rabbis as the Catholics have been from theirs. That is the one thing Catholics and Jews really do have in common. They have been lied to all their lives and they have not been taught the true word of God. And for the Jews, surely not the word of Jesus Christ because they don't even read the New Testament where everything out of the law and the prophets mostly called the Old Testament the law and the prophets points to Jesus Christ. I mean, this is like standing 24 hours in a line to see a movie, and when it's up to you to pay your money, you say, no, I don't watch movies, I don't go in here, and you turn it back again. So you stop there 24 hours for what? For nothing. Because you don't understand the law and the prophets. Because if you understood the law and the prophets, you would have accepted the Messiah, as he was announced, among others, by Daniel, chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. You have to understand, my dear listener, this is all to discredit the Jews as a race. So-called anti-Semitism. And it only works in a deceived world that does not understand, that does not believe, that does not follow the Bible, where it is clearly stated that every man is saved who confesses the Father and the Son, accepts Jesus Christ as his Messiah, and through this is born again in the Spirit, not in the flesh. God is not a respecter of persons, also means he does not care about genealogy, Circumcision is of the heart, not of the flesh. So my point here is the following. Leo Texel was a Catholic basher when working for the Masonic agenda. He turned 180 degrees and quote-unquote exposed Freemasonry as satanic. What he did not teach is the truth. Now, what's the truth here? Every quote-unquote religion is false. Every quote-unquote religion is of Satan. The faith in the one and only true God and His Son Jesus Christ as He reveals Himself to us through His Word, and I prefer the authorized 1611 version of the King James Bible, is the only truth to be found. So what you have to understand after reading this chapter or listening to this chapter is, so whether Texel worked for the Freemasons or the Roman Catholic Church, he always worked for the devil. That's the only conclusion you should get from this chapter. And if in any doubt on the true belief of the Freemasons, just check out the writings of Helena Petrova Blavatsky, Isis Unveiled and the Secret Doctrine, and understand that on the top of Freemasonry stands Papa Nero, the Black Pope, the General of the Society of Jesus. And with this, I will end my reading now. This little chapter in the book was only four pages, and I thought I would do it in 15 minutes. Yeah, I did it in 15 minutes, but I had to add half an hour of my comments, which is why I love reading these books and expose even the error in some of them, because it is not, because it is written in a book and it is widely held by many people interesting that the author really does know everything. Leo Herbert Lehman sure does not know everything. But am I complaining about that? Am I making a problem out of that? No. I try to see through these errors and lift up to the motto, eat the meat and spill out the bones. 
take what is truth. Do your own investigation and never ever forget to hold up the Bible in the first place when you do your own investigation on things like this. And then you will come to the truth and the truth will set you free. Praise the Lord. Jörg from Joggler 66, Hour of the Truth, signing off. God bless you. I hope I see you next time. Hope you enjoyed the video. And until then, bye bye.